Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Yifan Song. Today, I'm honored to introduce our recent work, correlated source extractors and cryptography with correlated random tapes, co-authored with Professor Vipo Goya. Randomness is crucial for our cryptography. Based on several previous results, without randomness, several basic tasks are impossible to realize. For example, geo knowledge, encryption, and so on. So in this work, we would like to get a better understanding on the extent to which randomness is necessary. To be more clear, we consider the following question. Suppose that a party uses correlated tapes in multiple executions of a cryptographic algorithm. Can the security still be preserved? This question can be motivated by, for example, a defective random number generator, which outputs correlated tapes under multiple invocations. So we all know a line of research of resetable security, where a party uses the same random tape across multiple executions, can be seen as a special case of our general problem. For example, resetable zero knowledge, resetably secure competition, and so on. In this work, we initiate a systematic study of the above question. As an example, let us first have a close look at correlated tape zero knowledge. We model correlations among the random tapes by considering an adversary which may have limited control over the random tapes of an honest party. To be more clear, a malicious verifier is allowed to specify t tampering functions a1 to AT. Then, the random number generator in the first execution is replaced by A1, and in the second execution by A2, and so on. After that, a string X is sampled uniformly. This X can be seen as the original random, random tape, which is unknown to either the prover or the verifier. In the first execution, the prover uses A1x as its random tape and A2x in the second execution, and so on. The prover is stateless while the verifier is stateful across all executions. We point out that using A1x to ATx is a very natural way to model t correlated strings. One can see that if the verifier chooses all tampering functions, to be the identity function, then this becomes resetable zero knowledge. However, correlated tape zero knowledge is impossible to realize, even if t is 1, and a1x is guaranteed to have enough mean entropy. This is based on the work of Dodis and his co-authors. Therefore, we consider to use a small random seed in the shared random string model, which is a weaker model than the CRS model. In our work, we further showed that if the tampering functions can depend on the CRI, sorry, the seed, then it is still impossible. Therefore, we require that the tampering functions should be independent of the seed. Other notions like correlated multi-party computation, uh, sorry, correlated tape multi-party computation, correlated tape secure encryption, can be defined in an analogous way. The central object in our work is a new notion of random extractors, which we call correlated source extractors. Very informally, a seeded correlated random uh, correlated source extractor on input a seed S and a source x produces a uniform output, which is independent of the tempered results generated by the same seed s, but the tempered source is aix. We require that for every tempering function, ai should not output the same string as its input. One may think that it is a due notion of non label extractors. As for non-label extractors, 
There is only one source, but multiple tempered seeds. Non-malleable extractors were introduced in 2009 by Dodis and Rich. They have played an important role in cryptography and complexity. For example, in privacy amplification, designing two source extractors and designing non-malleable codes. In our work, we defined correlated source extractors and another notion, weak correlated source extractors. The mean entropy requirements of both notions is a polynomial k, which takes the number of the executions t, the length of the output m, and the seed length d as input. The error rate is a negligible function of the security parameter kappa. The difference between these two notions is the requirement of the seed length. As for correlated source extractors, the seed length only depends on the security parameter, which means the number of ex executions is independent of the seed length. For weak correlated source extractors, the seed length can grow, can grow with the number of the executions. So we would like to point out the connection between weak correlated source extractors and two source non extractors, where the latter notion was introduced in 2014 by Chirafji and Groswami, and was, constructed, uh, was first constructed in 2016 by Chattopadhyay, Goya, and Li. So it is actually an even stronger notion because the, uh, the adversary is allowed to tamper both sources separately. Two source non malleable extractors imply the existence of weak coverage source extractors by considering the second source Y as the seed, and there's no tamperings on the second source. However, the, second, the length of the second source grows with the number of the executions, which means they do not imply the existence of correlated source extractors. Our result gives an explicit construction of a correlated source extractor with the following parameter. So we simply set the secure parameter, sorry, we simply set the seed length as the security parameter. Recall that k is the mean entropy requirement, epsilon is the error rate, t is the number of executions, and m is the length of the output. We also gave an existential result of correlated source extractors. We note that the mean entropy requirement is almost a necessary condition. Imagine that all tempering functions are chosen as different permutations. Then in this case, every output should be uniform and independent with others. So it requires that the original source to have at least t times m mean entropy. Now let us first see how this new notion could help us construct correlated tape zero knowledge. We first require that for every tempering function AI, AIX should have enough mean entropy. Now, under the constraint that for every two tempering functions, AI and AJ, they will not output the same string on every input, then the prover can simply apply a correlated source extractor on, the, on its random tape and the seed, then use the result as a new random tape in this execution. The property of uh, correlated source extractors guarantees that the prover will use independent and random, uh, independent random tapes in different executions, and therefore the security is preserved. To relax the second constraint, we rely on the technique from resetable zero knowledge. In general, resetable zero knowledge allows us to handle the case where the prover uses the same random tape across multiple executions. Correlated source extractors allow us to handle the case where each random tape differs from every other one. Therefore, we can combine these two notions 
to handle all possible tampering functions. However, there is a subtle leakage issue with this approach. Imagine that some tampering function AI just outputs the same as a one with probability a half. Then learning whether these two executions use the same random tape leaks further information about x to the adversary. Fortunately, this amount of leakage can be upper bounded. To show security, we simply leak this information about which two tampering functions will be uh, of the same string to the adversary. We define a pattern of x to be a vector s1 to st, where each element is an integer between 1 to t. Then it satisfies that if si equals to sj, then it means that the random tape in the x execution is the same as that in the j's iteration. Uh, in the, yeah. Now, the number of patterns is bounded by t to the t, which means leaking the pattern information only leaks t log t, which is bounded by t times t bits of x. Given the pattern, every two tempering functions Oh, sorry, every two temp uh, tempered random tapes are either always the same, which can be handled by the resetable zero knowledge, or always different, which can be handled by core resource extractors. Therefore, our final construction of correlated tape zero knowledge is the following. In, ex in each execution, the prover first applies a core resource extractor on its random tape and the seed. Then use the result as a new random tape in this execution and invoke a resetable zero knowledge protocol with a verifier. Now we give an overview of our construction. There are three steps. So first we generate an advice, where this advice will get the extraction precise later. Then we break the original source x into two L limited correlated parts. The resulting sources are paired up, and our extraction process starts from the first pair, x1, x2, to the last pair, x2L minus 1 and x2L. In the first step, the device is generated by using the source and a fresh piece from the seed. It satisfies that with high probability, this advice is different from every tempered one. So this idea is not new and has been widely used in the construction of non label extractors. Then, to break the source into several limited correlated parts, we use a strong CD extractor with a fresh seed each time. And here is the case for a tempered source. Now, we have two L times T plus one sources in total. They are paired up in the following manner. Each column of sources are denoted by a set chi. We note that the sources in different sets are generated by using different and independent seeds. Therefore, for every j, xj is uniform even given all the sources except those in the same set as xj. Now, our extraction process starts from the first pair to the last pair. In the j's iteration, x2j minus 1 and x2j will be used. Depending on the j speeds of the advice, one of the source is chosen. Then we apply an extractor on the chosen source and, a fresh, uh, sorry, and the result in the last iteration to get wj. Finally, we apply another extractor on wj and a fresh piece from the seed, ZG will be the final result in this iteration. A 
a general picture of our extraction process is the following. So the first seed, C0, comes from the seed because there is no iteration 0. And the final result, ZL, will be the output of the extractor. Now, to show that our construction is indeed a correlated source extractor, it is sufficient to show the following two properties. First, if the J bit of the otherwise is different from that of a temporal one, then we should be able to break the correlations between them in the J's iteration. Once we break the correlations, we should be able to make sure this independence remains till the end of the extraction process. So we first point out two important facts of extractors. For two sources, x and x prime, if given x prime, x still has enough mean entropy. Then the result of extracting x using the seed y is independent of the results of extracting x prime using the same seed y. To see this, we may first fix the second source x prime, and in this case, X still has enough mean entropy. Then the result of extracting X using the seed Y is independent of the seed Y and also the second source X prime, and therefore the second result. Now, for two sources X and X prime, if X itself has enough mean entropy, then the result of extracting X using the seed Y1 is independent of that of extracting x prime using another state y2. So this is because we may first fix the second result, and in this case, x still has enough mean entropy to use an extractor with a uniform seed. Now, for the first property, we compare the extraction processes in the J's iteration. We note that in the second level of, of extraction, they use the same random seed YJ2. Therefore, if we can show that given WJI, WJ still has enough mean entropy, then we are done. WJI is determined by two parts, a temporal source, and z j minus 1i. So we set the length of z to be much shorter than the length of w. That means fixing z only fixes a small amount of w. Therefore, it is OK to fix z j minus 1i. As for the temporal source, note that the J bits of the advices are different, which means these two sources come from different sets. So we may first fix the temporal sources in the beginning, and it will not influence the extraction process of the original one. Now, for the second property, by induction, we have z j prime minus 1 and z j prime minus 1i are independent. Therefore, by the second fact about extractor, the result uh, w j prime is independent of w j prime i. And also, we have z j prime, I, sorry, z j prime is independent of z j prime i. Finally, we would like to point out two future directions. So one direction is to discover more applications of core resource extractors. We believe core resource extractor is a very natural notion, and we will have many other applications. And the other direction is to construct a core resource extractor to match our existential result. That's all. Thank you.
Yeah. So uh, one of our goal is to uh, construct a core resource extractor such that the seedlings does not grow with the number of the executions. But for two, two thousand number of extractors, uh, both sources grow with the number of the executions. So like in our uh, application, um, we only need a very sh short seed, which is independent of the executions. But if we use 2,000 number of extractors, then we need to first know the number of executions in the beginning to generate the seed. Yeah. Have you tried to use like a quality extractors to construct two source extractor the other direction? Uh, uh, no, we didn't consider this case because so for quality source extractor, a big advantage in designing is that we can break the seeds into several parts, and each part is still uniform. But for 2,000 number of extractors, that is not the case. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So let's thank the speaker again. And, uh, <laughs>